Bradley, have you still got the exhibits 23, 24, 25 there in front of you? I do. And 23, that's one of the contracts for that your your personal LLC, your PC, your personal legal entity, right? For the district attorney's office? Yes? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And I understood your testimony to be that any income that came into the partnership, when I say partnership, let's, let me be more specific. You had an individual legal entity. Mr. Campbell had an individual legal entity. Mr. Wade had an individual legal entity. But y'all had a partnership agreement, right? Yes, but we didn't have that um, the entire time. There was yes. a period of time that we've been talking through that we had talked about in 2022 prior to leaving the firm that there was an actual entity for the three of you, correct? That is correct. And that was roughly during the time period where y'all brought some, bought a building together. Yes, correct. Right. And it made things simpler or for whatever reason you decided at that time that a joint entity made sense to own that, that building, right? Correct. Okay. All right, but those contracts there, they're not with the joint entity, correct? No, they're not. Those are all with you individually, is that right? Can you take a look at 23, 24, and 25? Yes. They're all with you individually? Yes. Okay. 23, what's the hourly rate that you were being compensated? I think that was a, was a first um, appearance. 23 is the... Um, I don't think, no, 23 is not the first appearance. 23 is um, the taint, it says. Do you want to see hourly rate on that contract? Um, 150 an hour. 150 an hour? All right. So the 150 an hour, <clears throat> the way I understand you all shared profits was you'd get 50, Mr. Campbell get 50, Mr. Wade get 50, and then y'all pay expenses uh, jointly as well, correct? Correct. All right. What about... Exhibit number 24. It seems to be the, the same. Same amount? Um, I don't know if it's the same amount. Um, I'm interested in the amount. Can you tell oh, the, no, uh, the amount was um, 65 an hour. $65 an hour? Mm -hmm. All right. That's not a... Um, particularly high rate for an attorney in the Atlanta metro area, correct? Um, no, it's not. Right. Was that a government rate that you were willing to accept at that time? Um, yes, that is correct. All right. And so the $60 you're getting for that contract, again, that split three ways, you, Mr. Wade, and Mr. Campbell, correct? That is correct. So when you were Minus asked, expenses and stuff like that. Exactly, yes. exactly. That was the income and then expenses come from that and then profits, whatever's at the end, correct? Correct. All right. So when you were being asked questions about Mr. Wade, I think the, the phrasing, and I object to it, but I, I think um, you might recall the question, the Mr. Wade brought you this contract or Mr. Wade, Wade got you this contract. Do you remember those questions? Uh, yes, I do. All right. So we're talking then about a split among the three of you of, of, of about $20 a piece, right, for that particular contract? For this one, yes. All right. What about 24? You got 24 there? I'm sorry, 25. You got that in front of you? I do. What's the hourly rate on that one? It's 150. 150 on that one, too? All right. And this same sharing went through the business, the way you handled that contract in, as well, right? That's correct. All right. Who is Austin Dabney? Um, he was a probation officer that um, passed the bar and we hired him and another individual, I can't, he, the other person didn't stay long. And did Mr. Dabney and the other um, legal associate that you all had working for you at that time, did they do some work on these first appearance contracts? Yes. Okay. Uh, and that was a pretty good position for a younger lawyer to be sent to get some courtroom experience, correct? That is correct. All right. <laughs> 2020, uh, you're aware that Mr. Wade had a serious illness during that time? I'm aware. And you and Mr. Wade, I think you described your relationship in a lot of details um, earlier about specific circumstances. But 
you you were business partners in let's say up till the time you left in uh, summer 2022, correct? That is correct. You were business partners up until that time. Uh, yes, I said yes. That that is correct. Okay. And while you didn't socialize together frequently, you considered yourself a friend of Mr. Wade at that time. Yes, we were friends at that time. Yes. All right. Uh, you are no longer business partners. That is correct. You are no longer friends. I mean, if he's saying that we're not friends, then I, yeah. I want to know what you think, Mr. Bradley. Do you consider yourself a friend of Mr. Wade? I don't consider. That goes to potential bias. Just, just cross. Would I consider myself a friend of Mr. Wade? Mm -hmm. I would. You were asked questions, Mr. Bradley, about the circumstances under which you left the firm. Do you recall those questions? I do. All right. And you left the firm. The firm remained the same as far as other employees, Mr. Wade, Mr. Campbell, as the main partners of the firm. You were the one who left, correct? That is correct. And you termed it as a disagreement. You recall answering questions as though you left due to a disagreement. Yes? Yes. And that disagreement was that there was an allegation of sexual assault by an employee made against you, correct? That is incorrect. There was not an allegation that you assaulted us, that you sexually assaulted one of the employees in the firm. That is incorrect, but. Yes. Yes. Yes, there was an allegation that you sexually assaulted a member of the firm, correct? Yes, there was an allegation, yes. And as a result of that allegation, you left? I did. And you were no longer business partners with Mr. Wade? That is correct. The firm remained intact, and in fact, the employee involved remained with the firm, correct? I'm not certain of that. Um, they did leave the, the building, of course, um, and I don't know, um, some employees did leave. Mr. Bradley, you in fact paid that employee $20,000, correct? That is, in, uh, that is, that is incorrect as far as what was, no. On or about the time that you left the firm, and on or about the time that the allegation of sexual assault was made against you, did you pay the person who had made the allegation of sexual assault any amount of money? There was money left in an escrow that belonged to me. I don't know what that amount was. And did that money that was left in the escrow that belonged to you, was that paid to the employee who said that you sexually I never, assaulted her? I never signed any, I never gave any money. I never, I left the money in the escrow account. What happened to that money? Um, I can't, I, I don't know what happened to it. For what purpose did you leave the money in the escrow account when you left the firm? I left the money in the escrow account. Um, For what purpose, sir? There was no purpose. You just left the money in the escrow account? Yes. If there's no connection to the money you left in the escrow account and the allegations of sexual assault that an employee of your firm made against you, why was it that you brought to my attention? Why did you respond? the way you did about money in an escrow account when my question was, did you pay this employee any money? I didn't hand any money. Um, it's, it was money from my escrow account to my knowledge. Um, to your knowledge, where did the money in the escrow account go? To the employee. To that employee. Was there one allegation or one incident of sexual assault with this employee, Mr. Bradley, or was there more than one? Just one incident. There were not two? To my knowledge, there were not two incidents, no. I'm asking for incidents that you have been involved in. Were there two incidents where you sexually assaulted this employee? No, There's I didn't sexual one? assault anybody. 
Was there another occasion where you paid any money as a result of an allegation of sexual assault against you? No. Did you sexually assault any clients of your firm? No. Never? Never. Who's Anna Rodriguez? I don't even know their name. You don't recall a client named Anna Rodriguez? Anna Rodriguez? No, I do not. Never met her? I do not recall the name Anna Rodriguez. Pardon me, Your Honor. I, I would object to this. I'm not sure what we're trying to do here. Uh, so I would object to this line of question. All right, Ms. Cross. Your Honor, this clearly goes to the bias that the witness has towards Mr. Wade and other individuals, his motive in okay. involvement. And I believe it's an appropriate, uh, appropriate avenue to pursue based on exploring his credibility. All right, at some point, though. I'm not going to go much further. Okay. Judge, if this is allowed to continue in this way, it does appear a little bit harassing, then is Mr. Bradley going to be excused from his privilege because oh, this is not... Oh, 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 that's what I was going to do. Don't do that yet. <laughs> sit, on it. sit on it. I think she's well, already done that. <laughs> <laughs> um, Your Honor, I'm, I'm asking in all seriousness that privilege, although... Uh, based on the answer right now, I think now we've opened up a whole area. Uh, what he has just responded to, he previously said was privilege. That doesn't sound like privilege to me. We'll have to address that when we go back through the run. So, Ms. Cross. I'm finished. Oh. <laughs> okay. Mr. Sadown. You were accused by Mr. Wade of misconduct in the course of your representation of Mr. Wade, correct? I was not accused by Mr. Wade, no. Who accused you? Did Mr. Wade not, based on the questions we just asked, did Mr. Wade not bring to your attention the sexual assault allegations? Ask that again, please. Mr. Wade brought to your attention the sexual assault allegations that you've been asked about by the prosecutor, correct? Correct. And at that time that Mr. Wade brought those allegations to your attention, uh, you were still the attorney for Mr. Wade, correct? Correct. And therefore, your conduct as an attorney, and the attorney at that time for Mr. Wade was called into question by Mr. Wade's passing along to you allegations of misconduct, correct? I object to that. I don't think that's um, factually true. I don't know that that's not, I know that that is not legally true. The attorney-client relationship is of a matter. It is not vitiated by other instances or anything outside that matter. I'm not sure that that's accurate. He was accused by Mr. Wade, his client. Do you mind if I speak? I allowed you to speak. Mr. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wade um, accused this gentleman of misconduct in the performance of activity while he's an attorney working with Mr. Wade and representing Mr. Wade. Those allegations of misconduct open up the question of whether or not he can defend himself by now discussing his confidential communications with Mr. Wade in connection with the representation as well as the allegations. That's the position of the defense. Understood. So what is the question you're putting? My question I'm going to ask you now is, tell us what Mr. Wade told you about um, when he began his relationship with Ms. Wills. All right. So uh, where I think we are with this is that Mr. Bradley previously testified that the reason he left the firm was totally and completely covered by privilege. When asked by the state, he went into a factual scenario that, to my mind, I don't see how it relates to privilege at all. And so now I'm left wondering if Mr. Bradley has been properly interpreting privilege this entire time. And I, I think the only way I can cure that is by having that in-camera conversation with him. May I suspend my redirect for you to have that conversation? Uh, I think that makes sense. But there, is there anything else that you were going to cover other than this issue? No. Okay. 
Ms. Cross, any reactions? Only to, Your Honor, Ms. the premise of Mr. Sadow's question was that Mr. Waite accused Mr. Bradley of the sexual assault. That was not my question, and I don't believe that's factual. Though there was an employee who accused Mr. Bradley of sexual assault. Okay. But re regardless, though, the point is, is that the circumstances of his departure from the firm, from what I've now heard, had nothing whatsoever to do with his representation of a divorce. Is that fair? My question, I believe the testimony has been that the circumstances of Mr. Bradley leaving the firm were related, I can't say how much, but certainly in a large part, based on the allegation of sexual assault that was made against him by an employee. Sure. And his previous testimony was that that was totally covered by privilege. Yes, he lied. Okay. All right. Other than this issue, which I think we've covered at length, was there any other questions based on Ms. Cross's examination from other defense counsel? No, Judge. No, Your Honor. Okay. No, Your Honor. No, Your Honor. All right. With that understanding, can this witness be excused, Ms. Merchant? Yes, Judge. All right. So, Mr. Bradley, I would ask, I don't know if we may be able to do it today. Oh, I'm sorry, Judge. I don't think I'm going to excuse him. Mr. Sadow had to preserve the rest of his cross for after you determine the privilege issue. Right. What I'm about to say, just logistically, is we will issue an order to that effect. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Bradley. Thank you, Ms. Merchant. Thank you. 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 Thank you.